So if you struggle with anxiety, I just wanted to talk about a couple of things with you because I understand how it feels. I've definitely felt it and I know how it feels sometimes to wake up at 3 a.m. and to not be able to stop thinking about maybe some missed opportunity that you had, some past regret that you've had, some thing that's coming up in the future that you're worried about or the fact that maybe you're in a lot of debt or maybe you know you feel lonely maybe you feel like no one likes you whatever it is there's a lot of thoughts that, that can come up and the mind becomes really creative when you have just woken up in the middle of the night because oftentimes it's your subconscious just running on hyperspeed and all of these emotions that have been buried deep down throughout your day all of a sudden have a chance to come to the surface and it can feel overwhelming and I know that feeling where it feels impossible to get back to sleep because you can't turn your mind off. Now, what I've noticed is I believe the number one cause of this happening is typically the processing of emotions and past events. Right? It's the processing of emotions and past events. So what I mean by that is Sometimes we go through some sort of situation. We go through some sort of, it could be a, a traumatic situation or it could be just some general situation where there's a lot for us to take in and process. But especially since most of us are on the go, we have activities, we have things that we're constantly doing. We don't really have a chance to be able to process these events that happen in our lives. So. For me, what I've noticed is when I do take a chance, take an opportunity to pause and be able to process for myself, just spend some time for myself, spend time off of technology, off of you know, computer, phone, just spending time literally sometimes doing nothing and maybe with a journal or you, know, you journal things out, um, but sometimes just literally doing nothing because the, the reason why I realized this was because I did a meditation retreat in Thailand back in 2017. And it was a Vipassana meditation retreat. It basically means that you can't talk to anyone and you basically uh, can't use your phone, can't use a computer, no technology whatsoever. All you do pretty much the entire day is meditate. Right? You wake up early, you go, you listen to the monk for a little bit, you meditate, eat breakfast, meditate, go to lunch, meditate. And sometimes in the afternoon, they have an uh, afternoon uh, chanting session. And then you meditate after that and you go to bed. That's pretty much your entire life. And for me, it was one of the most, if not the most profound experience of my life, because very rarely do we have an opportunity in our lives to really just spend time with ourselves. Think about it. Even if you're by yourself, even if you're alone in your room, oftentimes you're on something. You're on your phone, you're on your computer, you're watching TV, you're taking some sort of in external stimulus in. And we don't really have a chance to just take time for ourselves to listen to the sound of our own voice. And as a result, when we don't have that opportunity to process some of these thoughts, feelings, and emotions that come up, they get buried within us and the solution oftentimes, or the thing that our rational mind comes up with is, let's create things to do. Let's stay busy, stay busy. Let's work more, let's do more activities. Let's do this, let's do that. Let's watch another video. Let's uh, listen to another podcast, read another book, whatever it is. Our mind comes up with new things to do. And it's not necessarily a bad thing because oftentimes that can keep us alive. That's like a survival instinct is the mind thinks about new things to do, new things to take care of. But like I said, if it's not tempered with the space to process, then we're just constantly on the go. So what I've noticed is, especially if you're struggling with anxiety, take a look and audit your day. Audits your consumption. How much time do you spend consuming versus processing versus creating, right? So I've noticed that oftentimes when I have more anxiety or when I have more emotions that tend to bring me down, it usually is in a period of time where I'm consuming a lot. 
it's a lot of consumption. It's a lot of, you know, YouTube videos sometimes or whatever it is. I don't really watch Netflix. I don't really watch anything else, to be honest. Um, I don't, to, I, I know I say consuming, but I honestly don't consume too much uh, in terms of content, but there are certain periods of time where I do, uh, admittedly, right? I'm not perfect. So there are some periods of time where I get stuck in these rabbit holes or go down these rabbit holes of, I watched one video and I watched the next and the next and it's recommended video after recommended video and just keep going down the rabbit hole, right? You can't stop. So even if you're watching me right now, if you even if you're listening to me talk, I invite you to consider even taking a break for yourself after this video. And if you've gone con the rabbit hole of watching video after video, then maybe take a break, right? Maybe take a break and go outside and do something. So. You know, I know that's counterintuitive because you know, I have a channel and I put out videos and I'm telling you to not watch any more of my videos for the moment. But if it's in your best interest to do so, then that's what I care about more. I care more about what's best for you than you know, getting more views um, on, on these videos. So you know, it's, the priority is, is for you to be able to live your best possible life, to, be feel, to feel fulfilled and happy um, to be able to create the life that you want for yourself in every aspect when it comes to your relationships, your wealth, your health, every single category. So anyway, just wanted to, to talk about this topic. Hopefully it was enlightening for you and insightful, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.